I'm going to go over creating tessellations in GeoGebra geometry. So a little review here. So there are three regular polygons we can tessellate. There is the equilateral triangle, there is the square, and there is the regular hexagon. Now let me show three different transformations that I could use to start tessellating these. So uh, first, the let me show translate. So I can translate. That's just movement that is left, right, or any angle in between that, or left, right, up, down, or anything in between those. So it's no rotation, no reflection, no dilation, just uh, linear movement. So, or nonlinear movement, but just movement along a line. So uh, let's see. Let's take the square. So I select the square, and then I'm going to translate by a vector. So a vector tells us a uh, angle and a magnitude, or an angle and a length. So I'll go from D to G. So it's moved point D up to point G for the new square. And then I'll just move this around. And I could keep going. I think you get the idea, though, how I could tessellate this entire surface. And so, yeah, those four 90-degree angles are meeting at F uh, to create 360 degrees. So let's do the triangle. There I can use a rotation, so I can rotate around a point. So I want to rotate 60 degrees because that's the measure of the internal angle of an equilateral triangle. So I'll rotate that shape around point B, and I'll rotate it 60 degrees. And I will... So there we go. So I rotated. Now I'll take that one and rotate it 60 degrees. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have the six triangles uh, tessellating around that point to 360 degrees. There we go. And then I could keep going here. And again, tessellate the entire surface here if I wanted. And the last one I want to talk about is reflect. So I'll uh, model reflection for the hex the regular hexagon. So select my shape and I will reflect it around a line. There we go. And it only takes three of these to um, uh, create 360 degrees since each internal angle is 120 degrees. So there it is. And again I could keep going filling this surface. So there are three transformations uh, that we can use in our tessellations. So now I want to model a more complex tessellation. And I'm going to first model using uh, rotation. So let me move this up. And before I begin here, uh, you notice that when I created those original polygons here, it was labeling the points, A, B, C, D, and so forth. Uh, I can make it so it will stop labeling because as I create these tessellations, it can get a little annoying having all those labels. So I go up here to settings, click settings again, click that gear box at the top, and under labeling, it's currently labeling new points only. I'm going to select that drop down and say no new objects. So now I won't get labels when I create things. So I'm going to create a triangle. Now realize. Um, Triangles and quadrilaterals, I can, they, they can be any shape of triangle or any shape of quadrilateral, and they can tessellate because the sum of their angles is a factor of 360. So it doesn't matter if I create this to something that's more uh, isosceles or try and make it equilateral or just uh, scaling. So I'll just keep it scaling here. And... Now what we're going to do is we're technically going to tessellate this triangle over and over. But I'm going to manipulate this triangle using transformations. So first I'm actually going to select that triangle, just like in the middle of it, and hit that trash button or backspace and delete it. So alternatively I could have just put three points here. But um, yeah, I want three points 
showing that uh, triangle. Now I'm going to find the midpoint between these, and I will be rotating around these midpoints. There you go. So I'm going to select a point, the point tool, and I'm going to create a point between one of the vertices and a midpoint. And what I'm going to do is now rotate around that point. So select that point, select the midpoint, and rotate 180 degrees around it. Now here's what's cool about that is if I move that original point I created, the other is tied to it. You can see whenever I move the original point I did, the other one will always be rotating 180 degrees around the midpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and do that um, on the other two sides of this triangle. And I uh, will rotate those around the midpoint again. There we go. And now I'm going to create a polygon that connects all these blue points. I don't need to include the midpoint in this polygon, but the midpoints. There we go. Now check it out. Again, I can still move these original points, and the other is always being rotated 180 degrees around it. And so I have a, a uh, shape that I can easily manipulate. Now I can grab these original vertices. I'm essentially changing that original triangle and move those as well. So a few, a few uh, controls we have over this. All right, now let me show about um, tessellating this. So I used rotation to create this shape. So I'm going to use rotation to tessellate it. So again, rotate around a point and I'm going to rotate that polygon around the midpoints. So select the polygon, select the midpoint, 180 degree rotation. And I'll do it for the other two midpoints. And I can also rotate around the vertices. And then I can select one of the uh, new ones that uh, I've created here and rotate around their vertices, just like that. So I'll stop there, but now I can manipulate my original, and these are all tied to each other through rotation. So when I change my original, it changes the others. So it's pretty fun, create all these different, and again, I can do it even to a vertice. It's fun to just create all these wild, tessellations kind of immediately. There you go. So yeah, you can have fun playing with that. Now I want to do one more example. I'm going to go to a new tab here. And I want to model, so, so here we did um, a transformation tessellation using rotation. Now I want to do a transformation tessellation using translation. So I will do this with a regular hexagon. Actually, let me cancel that. Make it a little bigger. There we go. And maybe that's too big. Okay. Oh, and I don't want all these points getting labeled, so let me change that again. There we are. And I'm actually going to hide the Labels I do have. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just like you could do this with paper, you can cut a little shape out between two vertices. So these dots are going to represent where I'm cutting out. All right, so now I'm going to connect those as a polygon that I'm essentially cutting out of this side. And now what I'm going to do is translate that, and I could rotate this one as well. I could rotate at 120 degrees around a vertice, or um, better yet, probably to do it around a um, midpoint again. But here I want to model translation. translation. So I'm going to, under the transform section, select translate by vector, choose that polygon I created, and I'm going to translate it to the opposite side. So that arrow shows the direction and magnitude. And it's almost pointing to where it went, right? So it's like I cut out that bottom polygon and pasted it up top. And I could do this for the other two pairs of 
um, sides here. Uh, I'll, I'll do it for a, one more though. So here I'll create what I'm cutting out. Again, make that a polygon. and translate it. There we go. Now I'm going to create a polygon that just connects the dots of the new shape I created. All right, pretty hard to see it. Here's a cool feature though. On the very left, you see where it says algebra and tools. I'm going to go to the algebra section. It'll look a little bit like a mess in here, but I'm going to get rid of a lot of stuff in here. So I'm looking at just what I want. So let's see, I'm going to get rid of original, the original polygon. Get rid of that polygon. So I'm just going down the list. Ooh, here's a vector. Get rid of that. Looking for all these polygons because I only want the last polygon I created. There we go. So there's that polygon I created. Now, back to tools. And now I can just. Um, Tessellate it. So again, I'll, I'll do it by translation again. So select the polygon and choose some vertices. Sometimes it can be hard to remember which vertices we did. That was not right. Um, let's see. These should be. What did I do here? I got myself confused. So I'm actually thinking, how about I will I will actually do reflection here to make it life a little simpler so I can reflect around some lines that are a little more obvious. Oop, that one didn't. There we go. Mm. Oh, I see what happened. So I need to go. Let me go back to translate. So I actually, oops. What happened there? Okay, translate from here. Is that going? No. So maybe what I needed, so I'm gonna be doing a little experiment. I maybe should have left the original points labeled so I knew the vertices of the hexagon. No. Oh, are they all the black ones? Not sure what I goofed here. Okay, that reflection is what goofed me. There we go. Let's start again here. So let's come down here, translate. So this point, where does that correspond? Here, let's, let's actually choose another one. So this point I see corresponds to that one. There we go this point with that one. Um, let's see, this one should go to that guy. Yeah, here we go. We're making a little progress. Um, this point to that point. And I could just go backwards here too. I had a little trial and error there, but there we go. Then I can go back and mainly I'd want to just hide all these vectors I created so in that algebra tool. Let's backtrack here. 